put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys. Read our beautiful Holy Quran. There is no verse like this in our Quran. Another example. He compared the Spanish end of the Inquisition to his own prophet. So the worst possible Catholic is as good as the best possible Muslims. I believe that Uncle Cameltooth here, we love him, his life is equal in worth to mine. He don't need your peace. Chapati Christian. He don't need your peace. Chapati Christian. Did you hear the racist statement? Chapati Christian. Are we ready to go? Yeah, are we ready to go? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to talk about what is happening in Greece at this moment in time that our liberal media isn't wanting to talk about. And I'm going to be using an article from Newsmax entitled Greek Churches Desecrated Under Years of Migration Siege. The article reads, after decades of migration from one torn Middle Eastern, the mid war-torn Middle East, churches in Europe have been under attack by migrants being vandalized and desecrated. In Greece alone, from 2015 to 2020, there were 2,339 incidents of Orthodox churches being desecrated, accounting for more than 92% of cases amongst all religious groups in 2020, according to Greece's Ministry of Education and religious affairs. There seems to be a correlation between the increase in illegal migration and the incidence of attacks on Greek Orthodox religious churches and religious spaces during the five-year period which occurred during the peak migration crisis, according to the Greek City Times. The report defined desecration as acts of vandalism, burglary, theft, sacrilege, necromancy, robbery, placement of explosive devices, and other acts of desecration. Please note there are acts of terrorism being listed there. What this is talking about, ladies and gentlemen, is the ideological blind spot of our liberal elites who refuse to accept that migrants, immigrants and refugees will bring their worldview and their world and their world values to the countries that they come to. They don't check them out at the border and pick up a new set of values and a new set of attitudes just because they cross over into Greece. In other words, if you accept large populations of people coming from countries who are absolutely saturated in Christophobic prejudice and anti-Christian attitudes, they will bring those Christophobic prejudices and anti-Christian attitudes with them. Greece is suffering because of a policy blindness by liberal progressives who fail to accept this fact. Thousands of churches have been desecrated. Thousands of churches have been vandalized because the European Union 
imposes a policy of blind, unfiltered immigration and acceptance of refugees without asking the question, what attitudes and beliefs will those people bring with them? And that has resulted in churches in Greece being vandalized, being used as toilets, having bombs placed in those churches. The report continues. The smell inside is unbearable, a local said. The Metropolitan of Mytilene is aware of the situation in the area. Nevertheless, he does not wish to deal with it for his own reasons. The Times reported that acts of desecration against churches on a deeply religious society have the Greek people questioning their compassion for migrants who are proving unwilling to integrate and to conform to the norms and the values of the new countries that they are calling home. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not racist to identify Christophobic and anti-Christian attitudes that are being brought by populations who have been brought up in Christophobic and anti-Christian societies. Egypt is a land where Christians suffer anti-Christian pogroms. Iraq was a country that just recently saw an attempt to destroy the Christian population completely. Christians in Syria are treated as second-class citizens in Syria and have been since the arrival of Islam to that country. Naturally, Muslims coming from those countries, many of them, not necessarily all, but many of them will bring those anti-Christian and Christophobic attitudes with them. And that is why we are seeing the desecration of churches in Greece. And it isn't just in Greece. We've seen an increase of desecration in churches in France, a country that has a 10% Muslim population. London has a Muslim population of 2 million and there are desecrations of churches happening in London as well. Now, I want to be clear. I am not saying that every single Muslim you see is going to have an anti-Christian attitude. But I am saying that you are naive and foolish if you ignore the fact that countries that have defined themselves like Syria, like Iraq, like Pakistan, like Afghanistan. The latter is an example where it is illegal for someone to be a Christian. And we brought over thousands of refugees from a country where people believe that it is acceptable to make it illegal to be a Christian and an Afghani. In Iraq, Christians had their cathedrals bombed. They were persecuted as second-class citizens. And that is why we have seen those same anti-Christian attitudes appear in Greece. It is a failure of the liberal progressive state to acknowledge that there are Christophobic, anti-Christian attitudes 
amongst the Muslim population that are coming to the continent, that are in Britain. Go and look at the Christians of Egypt. Go and look at the Christians of Sudan and the Christians of Pakistan and the Christians of Iran and the Christians of Saudi Arabia and the Christians of Lebanon and the Christians of Palestine and the Christians of Algeria and the Christians of Morocco and the Christians of Somalia and the Christians of Turkmenistan. All of these countries are pilfered, are awash with anti-Christian prejudice and Christophobic attitudes. Bombings of churches, anti-Christian pogroms, kidnapping of Christian girls, forced conversions, raping of Christian women, outright military campaigns designed to wipe out entire Christian populations. Legal discrimination against Christians in Malaysia. Legal discrimination against Christians in Indonesia. How many examples do you need to see before you accept that there is a problem? A problem that we must stand up to. A problem that we must challenge. A problem that we must defend these Christian minorities. And notice, the Muslim doesn't want to talk about it. And that is the problem. The Muslims don't want to talk about it. And the liberal do-getters don't want to talk about it. And that is why these things are happening. Christians, you must stand up for one another. You must stand up for the persecuted church. Christians, you must challenge the hypocrisy of a liberal society, a progressive society, who on the altar of political correctness is willing to turn a blind eye to Christophobic, anti-Christian pogroms, bombings, kidnaps, militant campaigns, raping of women. And what do the Muslims do when you try to raise awareness about it? You just talk about Muslims doing this, Muslims doing that. They want you to talk about Islamophobia. Well, I say to you that when the Muslims demand that you talk about Islamophobia, you challenge them. Let's talk about the Christophobia that is across the Islamic world. Christians, find your voice. Christians, find your strength. Christians, find your unity. Stand up for the church. Stop being silent at the systematic campaigns that are being waged against Christians across the Muslim world and that our political classes, our governments, the EU, the Greek government, the French government, the British government are willing to turn a blind eye to these things. No! Let's challenge this guy to see if he can have an intelligent debate okay. Okay. about okay. 
about the Christophobia taught in Islam. Okay, so let's talk about, let, do you want to have a debate? Yes, yes. Okay, can we have it timed? Yes, can I speak up? Can we have it timed? Can we have it timed? Can we get a timer? 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 I am going to debate him right now, but let's have a time debate. So how many minutes each? How many minutes each? How many minutes each? How many minutes each? Let me say How many minutes each? Let me speak. How many minutes each? Ladies and gentlemen, do you want to see a time debate? Right. So how many minutes okay. would you like? Okay, let me speak, okay? Okay, let start the timer. Speak. And however minutes he speaks, okay. that's how many, how many minutes I speak. Okay, that's fair, that's if fair. it goes on for five minutes, let me know. Over to okay. you. Ladies and gentlemen, we Bob, who is known as the builder, I don't know what type of a builder he is, but here he's supposed to be a speaker. And we Bob the builder. Sorry? I heard him. He yeah, was someone's got the timer going. That the Christians in different countries, including in my country, Pakistan, they are not treated well. He's, tr and he's that's talking true. about you be quiet, you liar. And that's true. He's, uh, can, you tell you, can you tell He's you from them? Pakistan. No, no, no. He's, yeah. not, he's an idiot. I can you tell your yeah. I'm one of them. He said, I can talk now. Why don't you tell your fellow Christian to stop speaking? Okay, now he talks about yeah. Christianophobia. Now there's more Islamophobia than what he's saying. What about when the Muslims ruled? Spain for nearly 800 years and did you know when the Muslims ruled Spain from the year 711 AD to the year 1492 AD when Vernata was taken over by the Spanish did you know the Muslims let the Christians be Christians the Muslims did not tell the Christians either become Muslim or you leave Spain and if you don't leave Spain, you will die. But did you know when after nearly 800 years, the Christians took over, you know, they, there was a Spanish Inquisition and the Christians passed rules and regulations that all Muslims and Jews, if they did not become Christian and if they did not leave Spain, they will die. That's how good their Christianity was. And you know what happened? But did, the did Muslims, they kill? You be quiet. And did, did you kill? know? And did you know the Muslims and the Jews who did not leave Spain? <clears throat> they were burnt alive. By who? By the so-called peaceful Christians. Is that your peaceful Christianity? Is that the way you behave? And you look at them, they say the Muhammad, Muslims are killing. Muhammad the Muslims killed are everybody killing. in Mecca. What a liar. Muhammad killed this everybody in Mecca. This is a Christian Mecca. liar for you. And this, he, he destroy, Can you he tell your Christian to be quiet? No, no. The, why was the Christian speaking? His own parents. Okay, no. Be quiet. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, did you know? The Islam is so good. Man. We Muslims are so good. Why? When we talk about any prophet, we talk about them using respectful words. We respect them. We do not insult them. But the Christians, when they talk about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, insults. The Christians, they say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Who said he was Jesus? We don't need to because, say okay, peace be upon look, him look because at this Christian he now. is the Prince of Peace. Hey, excuse me. He is the okay, Prince of Jesus, Peace. Brother, he, don't okay, peace. he don't need your peace. Chapati Christian. He don't need your peace. Chapati Christian. Why? Did you hear the racist statement? Chapati Christian.
you have his speech parties, he's not to do the propaganda. That's why. No. That's why you love him. Brother, 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 Jazakra. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, we Muslims follow our book, the Holy Quran. This Christian book. Are shaitan, be quiet, use our language. This is Christianity for you. They are so. Ah, he's telling him to Fine. lift it up. Yes. That, that's the same of public, isn't it? Okay. Anyway, see the difference between us Muslims while we use nice language, while we speak respectfully. Look at them. He picks up the holy book of the Muslims and starts insulting. But we Muslims, no, 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 we cannot pick up Quran any says. holy book and disrespect it and insult it. Let me Turn tell you, minutes, ladies and gentlemen, Nearly five minutes. let me finish. He was uh, speaking. Ladies and gentlemen, and this is my finishing point. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, in our Quran, in Surah Al Anbiya, the Prophet, it says, Wama arsalna ka illa rahmatan lil alameen. We are not sent you, O Muhammad, but as a mercy for the whole world. Okay? And about Jesus, Jesus, it says, where does it say he was God? It does not. And did you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do anything, everything? What can the Christian God do? Jesus himself says in the this, I'm finishing now. In the God. Wait, how, how long is he been God, talking? Almost six minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. In the gospel according right. to No, God. wait, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, yeah, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, he spoke for six minutes. Now let me show you the difference between evidence and rhetoric. What you heard there, ladies and gentlemen, was nothing but rhetoric. Now let me demonstrate how you construct an argument based upon evidence narrated by Sahih al-Bukhari 2794 Muhammad said whoever changes his religion execute him I'll read that again. Muhammad, the most obvious false prophet in the world, said, whoever changes his religion, execute him. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, where, and he says, Allah Akbar, to the idea of killing people for changing their religion. If you agree with him, you should be ashamed of yourselves because you are a degenerate human being. Those who would say kill for changing their religion are degenerate. And ladies and gentlemen, what did he do? He compared, he compared the Spanish of the Inquisition to his own prophet. So the worst possible Catholic is as good as the best possible Muslim. Because Muhammad is the best possible Muslim but the Catholics who were burning witches and Jews and Muslims were the worst possible Catholics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in other words, the best Muslim is only as good as the worst Catholic. That means, ladies and gentlemen, that not only have we demonstrated our point that Islam teaches Christophobic principles in Saudi Arabia where Islam has dominated for 1400 years 
If a Muslim becomes a Christian, they can be executed. Today, we're not talking about Spain 400 years ago. We're talking about Saudi Arabia right now. And why? Because of Islam. Her Majesty's government website states, and I quote, that public expressions of other faiths apart from Islam are strictly illegal. No crosses, no Christian processions, no evangelism, no conversion. In Islam, in Saudi Arabia, the slave markets of Islam in Mecca were only closed in 1962. Saudi Arabia needs Christianity. England doesn't need Islam. How long are you speaking? I can go on for two minutes more. One minute. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. One minute. Ladies and gentlemen. The reason why the slave markets of Saudi Arabia were still alive in Mecca in 1960 was because of Mohammed's example. He was a slave trader. He gifted a slave to his daughter. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a real choice whether to follow Jesus Christ or Mohammed, whether to found our civilization on Christianity or Islam. Islam is Christophobic and anti-Christian. So regardless of what the rest of the world needs to do, we Christians must convict ourselves in our hearts that we will always oppose Sharia law. We will always oppose the caliphate. We will always oppose Islamic dominance, even if the progressives are too stupid and ignorant to understand what they are giving a carte blanche to. Okay, how long? I got 10 seconds more. The choice, ladies and gentlemen, lands between Christ and Muhammad. I urge you to choose Christ. Amen. Okay. Amen. Yes. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob did not read his own Bible. Let me read you verses from his Bible. In the first book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 3, in each and every Christian Bible, it says, the Lord said, according to him, who is the Lord God, according to this you want to heckle Jesus him, is go God. ahead, because he has to be all yes, David, 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 David. In the first book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 3, in the Christian Bible, it says, now go, attack the Amalekites, and totally destroy all that belongs to them. Do not spare them. Put to death in the Bible. Put to death who? Put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels, and donkeys read our beautiful holy Quran. There is no verse like this in our Quran. Another example. Come on. Come on. In the 
In the second example, Suratri was Suratri was one hundred and forty six. They said, Fight with Lord. This is not right. Okay, stop. Okay, right. Second example. No, he had called me all the way through. No, no. He interrupted me all the way through. He interrupted me all the way through. You do all the time anyway. Okay, I will do. Okay, brother. I'm here for you. Brother, second example from the Christian Bible. How good the Christians are. How good their teaching is. Do you do you know how to do it? It says. In the book of Hosea, in the book of Hosea, you didn't say that when he was interrupting me. You didn't say that when he was interrupting me, and neither did you. Okay, brother, brother. Okay, okay. Let me carry on. Another example in the Christian Bible. Here it is. In the book of Hosea. Come on. Keep your hands to yourself. I tell you to keep his mouth shut. Because it's Muslim certainty. Anyway, was, anyway, wait, is this what Prophet was commanded to fight with us? You, you didn't, no, you didn't when he, he was interrupting me. Christian. No Muslim is speaking besides me, so be quiet. So why are you burning now then? Be so Allah said, Allah said, look, no Muslim is speaking, only I tell you to be quiet. Fight with those who but don't say, say la ilaha illallah. Tell be quiet. Okay. okay. Second and example. kill them. Be quiet, you liar. And okay. Muhammad. Okay. Stop Muhammad did Stop exactly. Allah did exactly. Allah did exactly. Allah did exactly. You were interrupting me continuously when I was talking. You were. You were. Again. Again. Look at the temple of Muhammad. Look at the temple of Muhammad. You speak Rabbit here, donkey. Okay. Okay. Come on. Okay. Just to get power in Mecca. Just to get power in Mecca. Muhammad killed his okay. own people. Muhammad killed his own relatives. Just to gain his power. Allah, 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 was Allah is telling to Muhammad Allah. that Why be quiet, no, man. Kill, be quiet. Kill, kill those who are worshipping in Mecca. These Christians are in anyway. Instead of going and giving the right to Muhammad, he used the sword. He used the sword. This Christian, okay, let me read. Respect your Bible. So, it is so Muhammad, Muhammad did not, did not, of, did not use this book. Muhammad did not use this book. Instead of, instead of using this book, he used sword against his own people. His Bible. Six nine one five. How long have you been speaking, bro? Okay. Here it says, kill Jews and Christians wherever you find them. Woman. And this satanic book says, says and kill every this satanic book says, kill Jews and Christians wherever you find them. Shaitan, we find them. Shaitan. Respect your Bible, you shaitan. So, okay. So, if Allah, Allah is telling us to the Muslim, that kill Jews and Christians wherever you find them, should, should you obey Allah? Okay. Or so Jesus, who said, this Christian, your enemy. Liar. 
عزة ابن مريم عليه السلام يروح فلسطين فول جيزس بوسيس لاف يور انمي صلى الله عليه وسلم غير يا ابو لهب اكسكيوز مي Okay, ladies and gentlemen. The debate has obviously broken down, so I'm going to step away. If you want to hear me, I'm going to go over there. If you want to continue to listen to this, you can stay here. So I'm going to move over here. The debate has broken down. I'm going to move over here. So, ladies and gentlemen, I was talking about Christophobic attitudes that are being taught inside Islam. Let me give you another one. Let me give you another one. The concept of Kisas is blood money. It's the idea that if someone kills a Muslim, if a Muslim kills a Muslim, the Muslim family can demand the life of the Muslim killer as payment for the life of their Muslim loved one. Now, instead of taking the killer's life, the Muslim can ask for blood money. And this is the concept of Kisas, which we find in Surah 2, 178. So I'll just read that to you. Surah 2, 178. And here's what it says. Bearing in mind that it's talking about Muslim on Muslim. Ye who believe the law of equality is prescribed to you in cases of murder, the free for the free, the slave for the slave, the woman for the woman. But if any remission is made by the brother of the slain, then grant any reasonable demand and compensate him with handsome gratitude. This is a concession and a mercy from your Lord. Here's a false God. Is a false God. Is a false God. Now, the Muslim Dawah team have told him to come and do this. So what? that's what you're seeing. That's what you're seeing. In Surah Bukhari, it states this. Muslims cannot be killed for the killing of an unbeliever. In Sunan Ibn Majah, it says this. That the blood money is half that of a Muslim if a Christian or a Jew is killed. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, has a word. It's called an apartheid system. If we passed a law today in Britain that said that the lives of black people or the lives of Asians or the lives of Jews was worth half that of white people, that law would be rightly condemned. But Sharia law passes that law against Christians and Jews. Meaning, Christians and Jews, their life is worth half that of Muslims 
under Sharia law. That's called apartheid. We Christians have a better way, and that is the dignity of all human beings. I believe that Uncle Cameltooth here, we love him, Uncle Cameltooth, his life is equal in worth to mine. And under Christian law, if someone killed him, his family should receive equal compensation than if someone killed me. But under Sharia law, Islamic law, if someone killed me, the compensation would be half the amount that would be paid if someone killed him. That's according to Islamic sources. Sahih al-Bukhari, Sunan ibn Majah. Those are the sources. The reality is, ladies and gentlemen, Islam teaches Christophobic and anti-Christian principles against Christians. Asking a Christian to celebrate the diversity of Islam and to accept Sharia law is like asking a Jew to celebrate Nazism or to accept the domination of neo-Nazis in law. For 1400 years, we Christians have been persecuted by every Muslim political entity and we still are today. And we still are today in Saudi Arabia, in Egypt, where are the Muslims in Spain? In Where Pakistan, in Afghanistan, Can you me? in Malaysia, in Tunisia, in Morocco, in North Sudan, in Afghanistan. Every Muslim majority and political entity has led to the persecution of Christians. And it's time for us Christians to say enough is enough. We break the silence. We stand up to the bigot. We stand up to the Christophobia. And we stand up to this anti-Christian ideology.